Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Master Jesus. Glory, 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 glory be to God forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, honor, power, praise, majesty be ascribed to you, Almighty God. I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory. I exalt you, Almighty God. You alone are God. From age to age, you are God. You are our everlasting Father. You are the rock of ages. You aid and you reign forever. You age not. You are from eternity to eternity, and I bless your holy name. Almighty God, I ascribe all praise, all power unto you. You are the most high God. You are the greatest of all. You are the mightiest of all. You are the strongest of all. You are the most merciful, most gracious. None like you, O God. I present myself before you, even this hour, by the blood of Jesus. Sanctify me today. Sanctify your words in my lips today. That your name alone may be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the heaven is open over us today. And I thank you for the eyes that will see me today. They will see you. They will behold your beauty. And I thank you for the ears that will hear my words, even your voice today. Lord God, your words will be anointed. It will bring healing, comfort, deliverance, hope, and blessing to a family, to a life in the name of Jesus. Somebody's life by the word that they will hear even this hour shall be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you all praise, thanks, <coughs> in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Once again, you are welcome to church. I welcome you to Restore Us House International Ministries. I believe that Lord God Almighty is raising us to restore lives that men and women may be able to fulfill their God-ordained destiny. You will be fulfilling your destiny very soon. And I pray for you, you shall fulfill your own destiny in a grand style, in a colorful style, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to start by reading the word of God. Turn with me, please, if you would, to Psalm number 95. We shall read very quickly from verse 1 all the way to verse 7 and the A part of 8. The Bible says, Oh, come, Psalm 95, beginning from verse 1. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Verse 4, the Bible says, In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Verse 6, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, he says to you, Hacken not your heart, is what he says in the A part of part A. And so I say, to the one that all the angels bow to, to the one that every knee bows to, to the one that kings, all powers, all dominions, all thrones, all altars, all authorities, all principalities, and every name that is known and unknown in the realm of the spirits bow to. I honor you even this hour. I praise you even this hour. And I say you alone are my God. You alone are our king. You alone are the only true God. Be exalted forever in Jesus' name. Again, I welcome you to church in the name of Jesus. Please share this and invite somebody. I know God has a plan for you. Your life will be blessed by the word you will hear even this day because the word of God is ever fresh. This one will bless you. Share this message with somebody and your own life will be a blessing and it will never remain the same in Jesus' name.
precious name. Remember the Bible says, what you make good for others, you have heard that several times. What you make good for other people, God has a way of making it good for you. Share this with somebody. It may bless somebody. It may bring deliverance, comfort, and hope to somebody. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'm going to be speaking very quickly on the subject I have entitled, Cherished by God. I am cherished by God. You are cherished by God. I don't know how you think. I don't know how you see your relationship. I don't see how you see your walk with your almighty God. Now, when I say cherished by God, when I say cherish, I say cherish is what? To protect and to care for somebody in a loving way. You know, it is to appreciate somebody. It is somebody you hold as a prize, as a treasure, somebody you value. It means to hold on to somebody, to hold somebody in high esteem. Can you just imagine the almighty God, the creator of the universe, I am telling you that he holds you in high esteem. So when I say cherish, I mean cherish implies a special love and care for something or for somebody. That means to keep or to cultivate a relationship or a person with care and affection or to hold somebody very dear or to hold something very dear to you. Now, when I was preparing this, I remember a story, the story that Jesus told of the prodigal son. You see, in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus told a story there about, you know, a, a well-known parable of the prodigal son. You know, the son, one day, he has thought about it and he asked his father for his inheritance. He asked his father for, the father has not died, but he asked the father for his inheritance. And then what happens? He squanders it. In a reckless way, he wasted everything, all the money, all the inheritance that he took. He was partying lavishly with prostitutes. And at the end of the day, he had nothing left. He had no money left. He had nothing left. Out of all the fortune, he became hungry and began to walk as a pig farmer, for a pig farmer. Can you imagine a child who was blessed, who is blessed, of a blessed man, began to walk in a piggery, in a pig farm. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will not spoil or squander your own inheritance in this kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Now the son finally came to his senses. Jesus said in Luke chapter 15 and verse, uh, verse 21, he says, Father, he said this to his father, Father, I have what? Sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer what? No longer good enough to be called your son. Luke chapter 15 and verse 21. He came to his senses and said to his father, after he had squandered everything, he returned home. And then he said to his father, Father, I have sinned against God and against heaven and against you as well. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. But when he was, he decided to return to his father, the Bible says, when he was far away, his father saw him. His father had compassion on him. His father ran towards him. His father fell on his neck. He embraced him and kissed him. And he did what? He was happy. His father rejoiced. He killed the fattest animal he had. He ate and he caused all the people to rejoice because of one son that came to his senses and returned home. And you know what? He said, for my son was dead. And is now alive. He was lost, and now I have found him. You see, there is nothing as bad as a son that is lost or a child that is lost. If a child is dead, you know the child is dead. But if a child is lost, it will forever be on your mind. Where could he be? Where could she be? And so that's why the father was rejoicing in that story. You see, and that's what I say to you, child of God, in the same manner you are cherished by your father. You are cherished by God. All I am asking you to do, all the almighty God is asking you to do is come to your senses. I want you to help me. Tell somebody or type it there and say, neighbor, come to your senses. I will wait for you. Share this with somebody to be a blessing to somebody. Tell somebody, like the prodigal son, he came to his senses and he returned home. Say to your friend, say to yourself, come to your senses. Friend, I will tell you this. You see, you are not an accident. God has a plan for you. God loves you so much, he has a plan for your life. You are, you are a plan, in the, you are an agenda in the, in the hands of God. 
You are what? You are God's plan in your family. You are God's plan for your community. You are God's plan for your nation. You are strategically positioned in your family. God positioned you there. I pray in the name of Jesus. You will be relevant there. In your family, you will be relevant. In the name of Jesus. In your community, you will be relevant. In your workplace, you will be relevant. In your workplace, you will be relevant. I, I say in your nation, you will be relevant. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, do you know how badly the enemy wants you to fail? The enemy does not want you to succeed at all. Do you know how badly the enemy wants to disgrace you and cause you to mess up? Do you know how badly he wants you to be at the bottom and never to rise up? Do you know how badly the enemy wants you to be a beggar? Just like he did to the prodigal son. He collected all his inheritance. He squandered all, partying, riotously, and with prostitutes. Do you know that is the plan of the enemy for a lot of God's children? Do you know how urgently, how desperate the enemy seeks to destroy you? This plan. This plan of the enemy has been revealed to you and I. You only need to see what the Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus told us that the enemy cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. When God says you are cherished, you are beloved, you are special, you are, you are unique. When God says you are a treasure, you have value. When God says I appreciate you, when God says I hold you in high esteem, the enemy is, is coming. He's always lurking around. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, I want to remind you, child of God, no matter how far away you are from the Father, He still loves you. I shocked somebody there. Even if you are not born again, even if you are not yet born again, your talk fills the heart of God. He cherishes you. Why? Because he has deposited something in you waiting to manifest. And when you come to him, you will come to the full manifestation of who God wants you to be. You see, you are wonderfully created. You know, he, he, you know the things about you are wonderful. You see, no, you, you, you know, that is why, no matter why, your life matters to God. Let me put it this way. My life matters to God. What about you? I say my life matters to God. Does your own life matter to God? Your soul, even much more, matters to the Almighty God. You are cherished by the Almighty God. You are unique. You have value. You are a treasure to the Almighty God. Do you know, my friends, do you know, does it ever cross your mind? Do you have a threat? <laughs> or think about it how do you treat think about it this way how do you treat something that you cherish how do you treat a thing that is cherished if you say something is you cherish something how do you treat it how do you treat a person then who is cherished how do you treat a person who is valued how do you treat a, a, a thing that you value or that you cherish the simple way that crosses my own mind is that what you show love to it you show love to that thing. You let that thing or that person, that individual, you let it know by your care, by the attention that you give to it, by the detail that you give to it. You demonstrate love to it by your actions and your affections. The affections you show to the things, you, by, or by the things that you are willing to do for that thing or for that person. That is how that person will know that you really cherish that person. By the things that you do, by the kind of extent a man said in a, a, a few days ago in the news, he said, I will take a bullet for that person, for a president of another nation. You know, that means that person in his heart, he cherishes that person to the extent that, that he says, I will take a bullet for another person. You know, it will be obvious to that thing or to that person that that person is precious to you when you make that kind of statement. You know, there is a man that, I, uh, that crosses my mind. You know, he cherishes he owns uh, a, a classic car. It's a classic car. He cherishes that classic car. How do I know he cherishes the, the car? You see, the car, first of all, like I said, it's a classic car. The car is the force of his kind, of his model in the world. So that car is precious to him. That car is worth over six million pounds. You know, the car has an office, that car, where he put the car. I won't say a garage, because when you see the place, they show the picture of the place. The place he puts the car is bigger than my house. Hello? After all, the car was six million. He has other cars. But for this particular car, you know, the, he has an office for the car. The car, there's leather car there. You don't, the leather seats there, beg your pardon. There's leather seats. It's like an office. 
He decorated office. You know, you don't wear shoes into the office where that car is stored. <laughs> is this storage or sitting or where that car is? You must be, you must have a reason to go into that place where the room is. Even he himself, when he wants to go into the place where the car is, he removes his shoe just to enter where the car is. That car is highly secure. That car is cherished. That man is showing that that car, yeah, I cherish you. Can you then imagine how much more God cherishes you? I use that example to demonstrate to you how your thought fills the heart of God. If a man, before he attends a car that he bought with his money, <laughs> can take off his shoes before he enters where the car is, a car, ordinary car, because it's the number one, it's the first car of, his, of that model, then you know how precious you are. You are cherished by God, my friend. God cherishes you. And that's what God has asked me to tell you today, to tell to somebody hearing me, to tell that man, to tell that woman, to tell you, my friend, you are cherished by God Almighty. Look at what the Bible says. I will show you in Jeremiah chapter number one. God Almighty says in verse five, he said to Jeremiah, and he said the same thing to you. God is saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. So God is saying, you are not an accident, my, my brother, my sister. No matter what happened or transpired between your father and your mother, whether your father rejected you, whether your mother rejected you, whether your community rejected you, you are not an accident. There is a huge investment by the Almighty God in your life and in your destiny. Like I said, John, uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, God said, before I formed you, before you ever appeared in your mother's belly, God says, I knew you. Before you were born, before you were given birth to, before they named you, God said, I sanctified you. That means you are a treasure that is valuable in the hands of the Almighty God. I like to put it like this. I am a treasure that is what, that is worthy, that is dear, that is valuable in the hands of the Almighty God. There's a whole investment in you, my friend, in your destiny. You see, God has planned, you know, part of the plan of God in cherishing you is that what? God has planned that your life shall impact many others around you. You know, he has what? He is interested in what happens to you because your life must impact a lot of people around you. So God is interested in what happens to you. Is somebody hearing me? Praise the name of the Lord. So if God is interested in what happens to you, don't waste that life. Don't permit the enemy to waste that life for you. Your life will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. My life will not be wasted. Can you just say that? My life will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. I soak myself in the blood of Jesus. No weapon of the enemy formed against me shall alter or derail my destiny. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. I am precious. I am treasured by the almighty God. I am cherished by the Almighty God. I am valuable to the Almighty God. God has plans for you. <laughs> you may be the next teacher. You may be the next professor. Who knows? You may be the next trainer. You may be the next doctor or a nurse or an engineer. You may be the next preacher. <laughs> you know, the whole idea of God is to touch lives, change lives, transform lives. <laughs> you know, hallelujah to Jesus. God may even have ordained, you know, for some of us, for some people, you may be a local leader in your community. You may be a community leader. You may even be an area boy. Some people think area boys uh, are, are useless. They are not useless. They bring order in certain places. You know, there may be disorder around, but the function of the area boy, there is order. Some, some God has ordained some people to be counselors. Some has ordained some people to be chairmen of local communities or a governor or senate rep in some countries or you may even be a president or an mp member of parliament or you may even be the prime minister you know that will impact what a wider community or a generation that is the plan of the almighty god that is the plan of god you see the question is have you ever considered that god loves you first you see, a lot of us, because of the situations around us, because of the conditions where we find ourselves, because of the storms around us, because of the rejection and the failure and the delays and the activity of the enemy around us, we lose sight of the love of God. My friend, God loves you. God cherishes you. Start from there. God cherishes you. You are his delight. He, I like to put myself there. God loves me. I am his delight. He cherishes me. I am his treasure. 
He loves you more than you can ever imagine or much more than you can ever love him. You can't say, I love God because... No, 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 no. He loves you not because you're a good person. <laughs> Even yourself, you know that you're not a good person. Even you yourself, you will not love you. If you are given an opportunity to love the person that is like, like you, you will reject that person. You will not love the person. You see, God loves you more. Not because you first love him. You see, there is no way you can love God more, as much as or anywhere near the love that God has for you. Child of God, God cherishes you. You are cherished by the Almighty God. You are cherished by the Almighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. I say to you, you are cherished by the Almighty God. Now, God loves you more. You know, not because you love him. There is no way, there is no way, my friend. There is no way that you can love God. Did he not say in uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16? Let me show you John chapter 3. The Bible says there, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says, while you are yet in sin, while you are wallowing in sin, while you are enjoying sin, while you are squandering the love of God, the grace of God, Christ died for the sinner. Christ died for you. Why? So that he can raise and bring many sons that are cherished into the agenda of God, into the plan of God. That is why God cherishes you. You are a partner with your mighty God. He cherishes you. Hallelujah to Jesus. It depends how you look at it. It depends what you think of yourself. But I want you to start thinking in a positive way and see how God loves you. That's why John 3, 16 tells us, God so loved the world, he gave his only son so that he can win many sons unto righteousness so that you can be a partaker of eternal life. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, you see, God shows his love unto you, unto me, but not only forgiving us our sins, but also what going even much further and bringing us into his own family. He did not only just forgive us or forgive you your sin or forgive me my sins. He did that voluntarily because he cherishes you. Like I said, even while you are in sin. <laughs> Some of us, we know how we used to be. We used to get drunk and fall into gutters, but God was looking at us. Yes, we used to get drunk and fall in gutters. There are many preachers today who are alcoholics. There are many preachers around the world today who are who are into who are even God haters. But the love that God has in the blood of Jesus began to, you know, when they came to their senses, because the blood of Jesus is speaking to somebody, even as I speak now, it says, Come to your senses, come and know that you are cherished by the Almighty God. You see, God not only you know brought us and forgave us our sins, he also did what he went further and made us what? He brought us into his own family. He has what qualified you and I to be what? To share the inheritance that belongs to the saints and that belongs to Jesus Christ. We are now joined heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me show you what the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 12 and 13. The Bible says, all the way to 14. The Bible says, giving thanks unto the Father, which what? Which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You see that? Has translated us into the kingdom of his own dear son. Verse 14 then says this, and I love this. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, this inheritance that we are talking about, that we have in Christ Jesus because he has delivered us from the power of darkness. I pray for you. Every power of darkness that is ravaging your life, tormenting you, creating a storm, I command that power of darkness to see the light of Jesus because the Bible says in John chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So in verse 5 it says, and the light shineth in darkness, but the darkness comprehended it not. Every darkness roaming around your life, see the light. Lose you and let you go. Lose you and let you go. I command the light of heaven, the light of Jesus, to shine around you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know, so you see, what am I saying is this. God has shown his love to you and to me. You know, the inheritance that we have, like the scripture says in Galatians chapter 1, you can see from verse 12 to 14, you see, it includes salvation. The inheritance that you and I have includes victory. It includes favor. 
in every battle, divine healing, strength, hope. You can also have what? Peace of mind. And the greatest of all that I love the most is eternal life. You see, this is the heritage that we now have because God cherishes you. Hallelujah to Jesus. I say, the Almighty God, He cherishes you. Praise the name of the Lord. And have you ever wondered why God loves you? Loves you especially. Have you, has it ever crossed your mind? Why does God love me? You see, God says you are honorable in His sight. Let me show you Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 4. He said, why do you think you are worthless? Why do you think you are a nobody? Why do you think you are a lost case? Why do you think you are hopeless? God says about you, oh, God says about me, that I am what I am honorable. Can you how, imagine how they treat a honorable person? <laughs> Can you imagine how, how heaven rejoices? How the host of angels, how they accompany a honorable person? That's why the Bible says, when he considered it in, in Psalm 8, he says, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that thou regardest him? He said, Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Thou hast crowned him with the crown of honor and glory. Hallelujah to Jesus. And Isaiah is saying the same thing. Look at Isaiah chapter number uh, 43. Look at what the Bible says here. I will show you in a minute. Isaiah chapter 43. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 43. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 43. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says. God says you are honorable in his sight. Isaiah 43. Look at verse 4. It says, Since thou was honorable in my precious in my sight. You see that? God says you are precious. You are cherished. You are cherished. You are precious in his sight. You see? He says, Thou has what? Thou has been honorable. You are honorable because you are precious in the sight of God. Because you are cherished. But your mighty God. He says, Thou hast been honorable. And then he says, What? I have loved thee. And that's why I say, God loves you. That's why you are a honorable child. You are a honorable man. You are a honorable woman. You are a honorable son. You are a honorable daughter. Can I hear your amen? The Almighty God says, You are honorable. Halada. Stop thinking low of yourself. God has asked me to encourage you to say to somebody this morning, Come to your senses. Stop thinking low of yourself. You are cherished by God. And he says you are honorable in his sight. And look at what he says. He says, I have loved thee. Therefore will I give what? Will I give men? <laughs> will I give men for your life? And people for their life. I will give men for these. What he says. And I will give nations for their life. Praise the name of the Lord. God says I will give men for you. Ah. That means you will not die prematurely. <laughs> you will not die prematurely in Jesus' name. When people are dying on your left and on your right hand side, you will not die in the name of Jesus. You will live. You will declare the glory of God. Why? Because you are cherished by the Almighty God. The Almighty God says, you are treasured. You are peculiar. You are a chosen generation before him. You are meant to show forth his glory. And that's why he, he says you are honorable. That's why he says you are what? You are honorable in his sight. He says what? I have loved thee. You are honorable. You are precious. And he says he loves you. God says he loves me. What about you? Do you know, child of God, do you know or do you see the battles that God is fighting for you every night? <laughs> fighting on your behalf every day and every night. <laughs> Especially when you are weak, when you cannot pray, when you are too tired to pray. To pray. Do you know how many battles that God is fighting on your behalf? How he sends his angels to defend you, to shield you, and in the morning he declares you an overcomer? Do you know, child of God, when you go to bed at night, do you know the enemy's desire is that what? Is that you don't wake up to see the morning? That's why the psalmist, when he talked about it in Psalm 3 and verse 5, he said, I lay me down and I slept, I awaked. For the Lord sustained me. That means the enemy was warring during the night when you were powerless. <laughs> Some of you, you dreamt that you died at night, but you woke up, but you are still alive because God sustained you. Because you are cherished by God. Because you will not die by the power of the enemy. You will not die for your enemy to rejoice. I will not die for my enemy to rejoice. I will not die prematurely. I will live to fulfill all the plans that God has for my life. What about you? I will lead to fulfill the agenda of God for my life. I will impact my family. I will impact my nation. I will impact my community. I will impact my people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you know, do you know also <laughs> the enemy's desire? Do you know the enemy's desire over your life? 
<laughs> it's like even when you wake up that you are hungry, that you are naked, that you do not enjoy any provision for your family, or that you cannot provide any provision for your family. That is the plan of the enemy for a lot of people. Thank God you are alive. Okay, I wake up, I'm alive. But when you are awake, you are naked. When you are awake, you are owing rent. You can't pay your mortgage. You can't pay your rent. You cannot feed your family. You yourself, you are hungry. You cannot make provision for your family. But do you know that God, the Bible says in Psalm 68, look at what it says in verse 19. It says, Praise be the Lord, who or to our God, who had what? Daily loaded us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation. Psalm 68 and verse 19. I love the, uh, uh, the NIV version. The NIV translation says, Praise be the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. God daily, every moment, carries your burdens so that you don't have to carry it. And then it says so again, I'll read it in the KJV version, Psalm 68 and verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits. Even the God of our salvation, Selah. So the Almighty God daily, even when in the midst of poverty, in the midst of dryness, God daily makes provision. I pray in the name of Jesus, child of God, that shall be your experience from now, in the name of Jesus. You shall begin to see the provision of heaven. You shall begin to see the provision of God as the angels provided for the prophets. In the name of Jesus, you too, you shall be provided for. No longer will you be hungry. No longer will you lack what to provide for your family. In the name of Jesus. No longer will you lack provisions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory be to God. Do you know how the enemy seeks to catch you and to destroy you as soon as you fall into temptation? As soon as you fall into unforgiveness? As soon as you, you fall into an, a, a, a simple unrepentant sin, do you know how he wants to destroy your life? But I thank God. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, and look at verse 19. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us or cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All we need to do is just confess that sin. Confess my anger. Confess the temptation unto the Almighty God. Because the enemy is waiting to destroy, but you are cherished by God. God does not want the enemy to destroy you because he has said, for the rod of the enemy shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the enemy that wants to destroy your life with sicknesses, with infirmity, with hunger. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it shall not rest over you. It shall not prevail over you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In every situation concerning your child of God, God is at work. You didn't hear me. In every situation concerning you, God is at work. The Almighty God is at work. He is working things out for you. And everything will turn around for your good in the name of Jesus. Just for the glory of the Almighty God. I can see everything. Everything turning around for your good, for the glory of the Almighty God. I, I see everything turning around. The things that are not working for me, turning around for my good. The things causing me sickness, causing me confusion. The storms causing, blocking my way. I see them turning around, working together for my good. Is that not what the Bible says? Look, the Almighty God says, I know the thoughts that are things towards you. They are good thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11. Is that not what he says? He says, they are taught of peace. They are not of evil. Why? Because God says, I cherish you. So he thinks good thoughts to you. Only good thoughts is he thinking towards me. Only good thoughts. He says, not of evil. To give me what? An expected end. And then he says, then shall you call upon me. That's what the Almighty God says. Then shall you call upon me. In verse 12, Jeremiah 29, verse 12. Then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me and find me, when ye search for me with all your heart. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will what? I will turn away captivity. Turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, say the Lord, and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. So the Almighty God is saying, I, the Almighty God, because you I have good thoughts for you, I have good plans for you. All you need to do is just call upon me, just return unto me, just search for me with all of your heart, and you will find me. Search for me, return to me. You see, this is the problem a lot of us have. You see, when we are in trouble, when we are in pain, in affliction, we don't remember to come to our senses and return. God is saying to you again, like the prodigal son, 
when you return to me in verse 13 uh, verse 12 in that Jeremiah chapter 29 in verse 12 it says when you call upon me you sh when you go and pray unto me when you seek me with all your heart you will find me that's what God says you will when you search for me God says I will reveal myself to you I will not hide from you forever and then I will restore you I will bring you again to the place where I have taken you the plan that I have for you will begin to will be restored I pray that will be your portion in the name of Jesus your life will not remain the same in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you see don't permit the situation or the condition that you are in or you are passing through even right now to determine what you believe let me say it again. Don't permit the condition you are seeing before you now. Don't permit the situation before you that presents itself. It's an illumination. It's, 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 a, it's going to go. It's an illusion. It's going to go. It's a season. It's a time. It will go. It does not determine the plan of God for your life. You will pass through it. That season will come and it will go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It will go. And you will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Your own situation shall change for good, and you shall glorify the Almighty God. Look at what the Bible says in Second Peter. I love this. Second Peter chapter number one. The Bible says in verse number three, it says, His divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us unto what? Glory and virtue. His divine will has caused all things that pertain to us to be given unto us. All things belong to you, child of God. Why? All things are accessible. All things are available. All you need to do is come to your senses. You are cherished by the Almighty God. You are cherished. You are beloved. You are treasured. You are valued by the Almighty God. You have value in the hands of the Almighty God. God has good thoughts for you. He says, I love you. I have good plans for your life. Why don't you connect with him? Seek him. Draw nigh unto him. He said, if you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, I will open up myself. I will reveal myself to you and I will restore to you my original plan. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not fail God. I will not fail God in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't permit unemployment, my brother. Don't permit the pain that you see right now. Don't permit the disappointment that you are seeing in your presence now that you are going through the difficult condition you are going through right now to speak lies about your tomorrow. <laughs> your unemployment today, your pain, your frustration today, maybe you are single, you are not married, you are looking for a life partner, or you are having a marital issue, or you are disappointed in one way or another. Don't allow that situation to determine your tomorrow. It may be cloudy, yes. It may be uncertain, it may be painful, it may be rough today. Your tomorrow is bright. Kawuzakata. That's what God says about you. Your tomorrow is better. Your tomorrow is colorful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I say your tomorrow is colorful. Can you say amen? Your tomorrow is bright in the mighty name of Jesus. Lakuri Mahanda. You see, God is working something for your benefit. God is working something out in that storm, in that pain, in that unemployment, in that situation that you're going through right now, in the situation, in that darkness, God is working something out for your good. Is that not what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28? Romans chapter 8. God Almighty said there in his word, he says, we know that all things, not some things, everything you are going through, because you are cherished, you are in the plan of God. If you stay in the plan of God, all things shall work for your good. That's what he says. He says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and those that are called according to what? According to his purposes. God has a plan for your life. That is why you are treasured. That is why you are valuable. That is why you are cherished by the Almighty God. Can I hear your amen? Hallelujah to Jesus. Child of God. The Almighty God is working something out in your favor. The Almighty God is working something out in your favor. You didn't hear me. The Almighty God is working something out in your favor. In the mighty name of Jesus, it does not mean that uh, what God is working out will stop you fighting battles. It does not mean there will be no battles to fight. It does not mean that there will be no mountain to climb. It does not mean that people will not hate you. It does not mean that, you know, people that hate you will not increase. <laughs> no, it does not mean that. It simply means that in that situation, in that storm, in that battle, La Huskalazia, Luzo Paradalia, Ezusa La Kataprahanda, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Almighty God's name shall be glorified. In your life, in that storm, in that darkness, the name of Jesus shall be glorified. The Almighty God shall be glorified and you shall experience victory and deliverance. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. There will still be people that will hate you, even though you are cherished by the Almighty God. People will increase. They will rise up against you. People will despise you. It doesn't mean that, you know, God has abandoned you. It doesn't mean that you are no longer cherished by God. There will be people that will deny you even what belongs to you. Your whole inheritance, your heritage. It does not mean that uh, God has abandoned you or you are not treasure. It simply means that what the Bible says, in all of these things, you are more than a conqueror. In all of these things. Why? Because he has what? A plan for you. And if you line up your plans with the plan of the Almighty God, if your plans are aligned with Him, then you know that you are in a safe place. You are not rushing ahead of God. You are in the plan of God. You are waiting for God to determine your next move. Then you know that you are in a good place. Hallelujah to Jesus. And I say to you, as the sun is shining where I am, I say to you, Isaiah chapter 60, Arise, shine, for the light is come. Your light is come. Because you are cherished. In every situation, in every power of darkness, I say, come to your senses, rise up and shine in the mighty name of Jesus. Look at what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, look at verse 18. God says, For behold, I have made thee what well, this day a defensed city, and and what? And an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole of the land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Look at what it says in verse 19. He says, and they will fight against thee. You see that? So I am reading this to you so that you don't think that because you are uh, you are cherished of God, because God says uh, you are a brazen wall, or because you are an iron pillar, or that God says I have raised you up, or because you are treasured, or because you are loved of God. It does not mean that they will not fight against you. That's why I'm reading this to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 19. It says, and they will what? And they shall, not they may or will, they shall fight against you, and I love the latter part of it. They shall fight against thee, and then it says, but they shall not prevail. You see, in the midst of the fight, it's a fight. It may be a 12 round fight. When you are around one, you are already complaining. You have to persevere and get around 12 because it must end. It must end in your favor. I say in the name of Jesus, it will end in your favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God says, they shall not, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, say the Lord, and he will deliver thee. You see, I have this privilege, child of God, and I'm going to round up now to remind you that the Almighty God, He says, you are precious to Him. And so, what will He do? Because you are precious and because you are cherished, He will redeem you for His own glory. His presence shall be with you. I pray His presence shall be with you throughout this month. This month that you are in, the, the presence of the Almighty God shall not forsake you. He says, I will not leave you nor forsake you. In every challenge, in every condition, in the mighty name of Jesus, you shall be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. In every condition, in every darkness, in every battle, in every fight, in every situation, you will be victorious. Don't matter, it doesn't matter the failure or the rejection. God has a better plan for you. La Kasha, encourage yourself. Come to your senses. Say to somebody, come to your senses. The prodigal son came to his senses. Come to your senses. Hallelujah to Jesus. The Almighty God is on your side. Why? You are precious to him. He cherishes you. Hallelujah. Now, let me read this to you. Look at what the Bible says. Isaiah chapter 43. See, God says, look at beginning from verse 1. I will read this all the way to verse number 4. The Bible says, Isaiah 43. For now, thus say the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, you can put your name there, O Benjamin, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, not that I will redeem thee, I have. You may not see the redemption, but God says, I have redeemed thee. You will see it. You will enter into it. You will experience it in the mighty name of Jesus. And you will testify that the word of God is faithful. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Look at what it says. It says, I have called thee by thy name. It says, Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, it doesn't mean you will not pass through the water. <laughs> you would have said, God, because I'm precious to you now, don't let me go. No, 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 no. He says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not overflow thee. That means you will pass through water. <laughs> you will pass through rivers. And then he says, What? It carries on. It says, I will be with thee through the rivers. It says, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, so as if it's not enough that you are going through water, as if you are going through rivers. Now it says, fire will also come. But you are treasured, but you are cherished, but you are loved. But I'm going through waters. 
I'm going through rivers. I'm going through fire. Ah uh ah. -uh. But the good news is this. It says, They shall not what? They shall not burn thee. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It says in verse 3, For I am thy, the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. It says, I gave Egypt. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopian Seba for thee. Yeah, remember he said, I will give nations for you. I will give men for you, for your life. I will give nations for you. That's what he says. He says, since thou are precious in my sight. That's why I say to you, you are treasured. You are cherished. He says, since thou, let me read it to you, verse 4. It says, since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast what? Been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. That's what God is saying concerning somebody who is hearing me. I am that person. What about you? God says, you are precious in his sight. I will give men for you. I will give nations unto you. Hallelujah. Because you are precious. You know, when the almighty God is on your side, child of God, when he is your father, when you are precious to him, you know that no sickness, you know that no disease is permitted around you. When it comes, it will go. Remember, he said, you will go through the waters. He said, you will go through the rivers. He said, you will go through the fire. He said, you will go through the storms. But he says, I am with you. It will not overwhelm you. So that means when sickness comes, it will come, it will go. When diseases come, it will come, it will go. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your body is the temple of God. Is that not what they said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16 and 17? He says, no, you know that your body is the temple of God. And that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it says in verse 17, and I love that. He says, whosoever defiled that temple, he will not destroy. So that means the sickness that defiles my temple, get ready, you'll be destroyed. Whatever sickness that defies your temple, it shall be destroyed. Because God said, because you are precious to me. You are honorable to me. I have loved thee. I will give men for thee. Instead of you to die of that disease, God says, I will give men for you. For that sickness, instead of me to die and lose my life, God says, I will give nations for my life. He will give nations for my life. That applies to you as well. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now, look at what the Bible says. Again, I'll read it to you. 43, Isaiah 43, verse 41. He said it there. These people have I formed for myself. God is saying to you, my brother, God is saying you are precious. Child of God, the light of God is shining. The light of God is bright. It's shining over you. You shall excel. I say you shall excel. The heaven is open. You shall enjoy open heavens in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you are precious to the Almighty God. You see, when God says you are treasured, when he says you are special to him, <laughs> he puts himself out for you. He puts himself out. A God that has by, by himself, by his own word, by his covenant. You know what he does? He, he, you have an equal responsibility to him. When God makes a covenant to protect you, when he makes a covenant to, to fight for you, he has said, you call upon me. When you seek me, you will find me. You too, you have a responsibility. You have an obligation to seek the Lord, to draw, to draw nigh unto him, to call upon him. You must let him know that you appreciate him also. You must let him know also that you cherish him also. Especially, how do you show that? You show it in your praise. You show it in your worship. You show it in how you honor the Almighty God, how you reverence the Almighty God. You show it in your obedience to the Almighty God. You show it consistently. And you know what God does? God will commit himself. By covenant, he has spoken his word, and his word will never return to him. Word. So when you do your part, God is committed to do his own part. He will prove himself faithful in your own life and on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. All you have to do, child of God, is let God know that he is worthy, or let God know that you are worthy of the blood. He shed the blood of his son for you. Let him know that that blood is not in vain. Show God that God can, you yourself, that you can hold value. Show God that you can hold the value that God places upon you. Obey Him. Let God know that you can be pleasing to Him. Let Him know that you can be a joy to Him. In your praise, in your worship, let Him know. Let Him know that you can be a sort of pride to Him, a sort of joy to Him, that He can look down and say, that is my son. Ah, may heaven smile on you in the name of Jesus. Let God know that He can be glad through you, that when God is looking for people who are holy, who are faithful, who are righteous, who are obedient, when this prophet says, who shall I send? When he heard the voice, when God looks down, let him find you worthy. You know, if you are not born again, you are still precious to him. The blood of Jesus is available for you too, as a roundup. 
the blood of Jesus is available for you too. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior today and be a member of his family. Become a possessor of his inheritance and the heritage that he has for you. Become an, an inheritor. That's what Colossians chapter 1 said. So that you, be, you inherit the inheritance of eternal life, of peace, of joy, of deliverance, of favor, of blessings of the Almighty God. So that your life can bring glory to him. My life will bring glory to God. As you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I pray your life will bring glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Remember, you are cherished by the Almighty God. You are beloved of the Almighty God. The Lord bless you. Share this with somebody and be a blessing this week. We are off to church. The Lord bless you. Have a blessed week. I will speak to you again during the week. God bless you. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. You are cherished. You are special. You are precious. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen.